Annie and Natasha from the gallery. You might recognize us as gallery assistants here at Gallery 500, but we're switching it up this month to talk about our work as the latest emerging artists at Gallery 500. Yeah, so we're going to take a second and introduce ourselves a bit for those that haven't met us or to introduce us as emerging artists compared to gallerists. So my name is Natasha Fenga. I work primarily in photography and image-based media. So for this exhibition, I use my photographs and then use digital painting techniques and other digital manipulation techniques to create surreal portraits of nature. And I'm going to pass it on to Annie now. And I'm Annie Spall. Um, I'm a gallerist here at Gallery 500, but I am also a, I like to consider myself a mixed media artist, I think, these days. Um, but my background is in photography. I studied that in college. But um, this body of work is a group of cyanotypes that I've produced for this exhibition um, titled Image Makers. Uh, so it's basically highlighting all sorts of different ways in which we make images. And I, for this exhibition, used a cyanotypic process, which is a historic process of photography. So it, um, it involves using light-sensitive chemicals and um, working with positive or negative images to produce positive images. So, um, yeah, so I also come from a photo background like Annie, but very different in the same regard. Uh, Annie has, well, actually, I'm going to take a step back and kind of give you some history about both of us. So as you know, we're both gallerists here, but me and Annie have actually known each other for longer than that. Um, we both went to high school together at Spruce Creek, and we went through the IB program, and that's how we originally met, through IB Art. And then we both went our separate ways from college, like during college. She was also, she was a grade older than me. And then during the pandemic, because I went away to school, I was back here and I remembered meeting her and thinking she was cool and I wanted to have more creative photo friends around me. So then we just started hanging out more and, you know, our same interests brought us together a lot. So I guess to kind of bring it back around during that time in high school, her thing was all analog, so all original three, 35 millimeter film and dark room processing and really any of the tangible aspects of photography, more vintage, and then I was more digital. So I would like for her to share more about her process of making these cyanotypes because I know that I had difficulty understanding it as a photographer. Um, I've stained my hands completely and like my legs and the chemicals and like turned myself blue um, making this body of work, um, which has been quite an experience because um, you're playing with a lot of sensitive materials. So you have to be aware of exposure and exposure times um, as to not overexpose or underexpose an image to get your details to look exactly how you need them to look. Um, so can you take us more through a step-by-step -step process? Because um, somebody from the outside, I didn't realize these chemicals. I thought these were some sort of special chemicals. You got to get special. But no, you can get them on Amazon for $10. Mm -hmm. And not that I'm saying you did that, but... I mean, I didn't do that. Oh, okay. There you go. See, it's very affordable. Um, but can you give us more of the step-by-step -step process? Because you're saying it's sensitive to the light. So while well, I'm kind of just explaining to you how there's like no actual machine or mechanism, like a, like an actual camera um, and like how you like had your negatives done and like your office depot experience and <laughs> all that fun extra stuff. Um, yeah. So for an example, I guess I can start with, um, you start with a piece of paper. You can start with any blank piece of paper. Um, something thicker, so I use watercolor paper, or a mixed, this is technically like a mixed media paper. And you coat it in your emulsion, your chemicals, and then you have to expose it to sunlight. And when you expose it to sunlight, it will leave an inverse of whatever your image is. So this is what it means to make an image um, in a kind of very basic sense. It's to leave an impression. Um, and that's kind of where the word image comes from when you're talking about photography. Mm, so I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, 
we should look up the actual definition of the word. I'm kind of curious now. But um, so I produced these transparencies. So they're inverted from what the original image and tonality is of the image. And I would place it onto my paper and expose it in the sun. And then it would eventually produce my images. So I went and curated them and had a bunch of fun making a bunch of little circles um, for, my ex for my display. But um, Why did you choose circles? I've actually been wanting to ask you this. I've just been like, oh, I love the circles, but I haven't asked about it more deeply. Um, I think it's kind of a quirky commentary for me. Um, I'm really interested in how technology uh, affects us and our relationships to things. So um, everybody's profile picture is a little circle, you know, mm, on Instagram, on your smart. phone or everywhere. So we are, we're very connected to kind of this idea of a circle, um, mm -hmm. especially through technology. But then, I mean, there's also just the, the deeper significance of like what a circle can mean or whatever. I just thought aesthetically, it would be a cool way to also show off the tone changes and a little bit more about how the process works. So you can kind of visually see the you know, where my mm -hmm. chemical spills are, or like where something went amiss or I yeah. accidentally exposed something wrong. Um, I think this whole, for me, process was more about having fun and just kind of creating a body of work. I know like as an emerging artist, you want to take yourself super seriously, but I still just want to have fun. <laughs> so um, I've been having a lot of fun. Yeah. When you're playing with light, like creating a cyanotype, taking a photograph, making an image, you're, you're playing with something that is like very spiritual, in my opinion, um, very true to an essence of a moment. So um, not only are these cyanotypes like photographs that I took at one point in time, but they're also made with light in the sun or light from the sun in the backyard of where I live. So that's also something that's very important to the process for me. Yeah, definitely. But speaking of spirituality, <laughs> um, your work kind of takes on some quirky spiritual themes. So I was curious yeah. if you could fill me in a little bit about all of that. Yeah, we love quirky spiritual themes. Um, some spooky vibes. So, yeah, that's, um, I think, a reason why I do love working with you so much is because we do come from a similar background of seeing photography as a spiritual process and... Uh, kind of how photography is how you can study the world with images as well because you know we're visual creatures everything all, most of our information comes from visuals so and you know we need photography and everything like whether it's a science book or like a surveillance mugshot to art or whichever like it's literally everywhere and it's a great way to study things so to me that's almost parallel to what I believe to be the main source of energy running through things, keeping all things connected. It's just uh, the most tangible thing that we can see and conceptualize. So that's why I really like it as a tool. But I think there's also a lot of uh, presumptions, I guess, with photography being the truth, because people think, oh, it's just in a camera, like you take what's there. And that's the truth. But no, that's not true. As we see more and more uh, beyond the actual Photoshop aspect of images being edited or whichever, like, you know, everybody has a different perspective. And with a camera or not, the way you look at something is still going to be different than the person next to you. So all these little things that go into making an image, whether that's perspective or your focal length or whichever, like that's your point of view. And therefore it's not necessarily the truth. But I think it's interesting to think of photography as the truth because, and then it's funny too, because people are like, oh, Photoshop manipulation, that's not true. But there's so many things in this world that are true that we just don't see. So that's why I like using Photoshop and uh, like procreate to draw in the light because to me the energy that I was explaining that runs through everything like in photography that we see is light and but we can't always capture like the way we want to or that energy so totally. 
Yeah. So painting it in allows me and then, you know, doing other manipulation things. Like maybe it's not what's physically there, like that we see into the naked eye. But to me, it is very much spiritually there and spiritually true. But again, that's just my perspective, though. It's not necessarily like a worldly truth, even if I like to think it is. I think it's funny when you talk about, um, you know, how we perceive things. Um, One thing I've been thinking about a lot more since I've been doing my cyanotypes is the visible light spectrum. And one of my favorite textbooks in college was called Light, Science, and Magic. Mm. I'm a big fan of magic, but science science Mm. is cool and light is very important. But um, It's all the same thing. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Um, But that was a photography textbook. I thought that was a really clever title. But that has me thinking about the the visible light spectrum. Um, So the human eye can only see so much of color, of everything else. You know, there's animals that see more color than we do, um, everything like that. And beyond the visible light spectrum is the UV light spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's been a fun process to use, you know, something that feeds plants, something that like Mm -hmm. burns our skin to make art. (laughs) Um, Yeah. It's been really fun to play with. Yeah, especially like using that power um, and then making the images. But I think also it's, interesting with our work too now that you know we're talking about it and we're officially emerging artists that people probably don't know is the work that we used to do together before this because we actually collaborated a lot so if you knew us which I guess I will explain it to you now um um for example I was doing a project a few years ago when I was still in college that was exploring the relationships Floridian youth like teenagers and young adults have with the natural world because I saw how we were so much more connected to it spiritually and just like intrinsically compared to other people in other places especially the youth so um since I was here during that project I did work with Annie on it a lot um and basically I would go to different Florida Floridian landscapes and then have my subjects, which were youth subjects, dress and and style them basically in clothes that represented and paralleled the nature around them. Um, so a big part of that that kind of came out, especially because I used Annie as one of my subjects, uh, was the idea of water and rebirth. Um, we did it in the springs and she had a shivering dress on. So a lot of those ideas that I was taking from that then um, evolved into the work that you're seeing behind me that is going to be in this exhibition with um, pointing out the spiritual nature of the environment. So I think it's interesting how I brought that in even like, you know, years later, and especially it's even more special that we're showing together. But I know you also have some pieces of this project that have evolved from past things that we've collaborated on. Do you want to talk about it more? Yeah. Um, so the process for anybody who doesn't know about photos, sorry, uh, is culling. So you are culling through your photos, you're going through, you're making selections, you're, um, you're deciding what works with what, how to position it, how to crop it, how to display it even. Um, but for this exhibition, I also culled from a lot of my past. So I, I I used a lot of images over the past two years that I thought kind of followed a theme. And some of them, like, they're just pictures I posted to Instagram. Some of them I took with my phone. Like, um, I had one of, like, a fish, a hand in a fish. Oh, I love that one. And that's, like, everybody's favorite. And I I was just at the beach one afternoon, and this this little kid runs up to me and he goes, look, I caught a fish. Oh, Um, it was a little kid holding it? It was just a little child. And he goes, I caught a fish. And he just kept running up, and he kept showing me the fish. And I, I just... That moment meant so much to me that like this kid mm-hmm. just was interacting with me and it was just a very, very special thing for me. So I photographed it because I, I loved the way the fish was shining in the light and mm-hmm. it just, I don't know, it was really, really powerful. Um, so um, since this exhibition is called Image Makers, uh, I wanted us to both talk about what that word means for us. Um, I first heard this a lot in school because they actually had a program for younger students called Image Makers. And basically it was to have people and the kids think more detailedly about the photographs they were making or whatever art. So it can include 
not just like what we think of as stereotypical photography, but like collage or whichever, and like really focusing on the story and the concept behind it versus just like documenting something. But what does it mean for you, Annie? To be an image maker? Yeah. Um, I guess I would say being an image maker means to leave an impression or to share something with somebody, um, which is, I think, what imaging is. You know, like, uh, I do an alternative process called cyanotypes, so that is leaving an impression with light on something. So my photographs, whether it be my cyanotypes, whether it be a digital print or something I even share on social media, it's usually um, something that is made to leave an impression, to get somebody to think or to understand my experience or whatever I'm trying to communicate or even just um sometimes it's a feeling but it's just that kind of like impression yeah it's just going deeper than the actual visual aesthetics of it basically I'd yeah say. like the what of thinking of it in different contexts whatever that might be and how those contexts intersect well I think the word impression could be like a really um like a physical thing but it can also be like a very like mental thing like, yeah you yeah. know, like collaging, you can like leave impressions and um, or like even like different like art techniques or like leaving mm-hmm. impressions and like whatever in the media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who is that? Whoa. What's up, guys? <laughs> Whoa. How's it going? What are you doing here? Oh, well, you know, I just uh, was walking around and saw you guys in here. I heard that you guys were the new emerging artists. So, I have a couple questions for you. I wanted to see what you guys have as far as what your process is, what kind of equipment you like to use. But first, we'll start with what does emerging artist mean to you guys? Go ahead, Amy. That's a good question. What does it mean to be an emerging artist? Uh, it means I am emerging. <laughs> I don't you but, stole but, my like, answer. I don't think I am emerging, you know, like I It's a process, right? It is a process. It's a process. You know, I this is maybe the first show that I've put together that like I'm trying to actually sell or like that I'm like I'm doing it, I'm an adult, but like I've been displaying work since I was in high school with my Tasha. So mm-hmm. like it's um it's nothing different, you know, like I don't think that I'm a different person or I don't you know, like You haven't hit that mark yet. You're just kind of progressing through the emerging process yeah i don't mm-hmm. i don't know that you ever you don't ever really hit that mark yeah, you're, always, you're working. always growing yeah you know? for mm-hmm. sure yeah i guess to me it's um yeah because i feel if you're any artist which i think most people are in different sense when you first start your emerging but whenever i hear the term and the art world context so to say I think that this is the first time that as an artist you're fully sharing your work to the world and showing your identity as an artist um, versus just uh, making work for yourself to grow. Um, This is like when you start all your efforts that have been, you've been working at since a student or whichever, like they're all coming together so you can start taking the stage and doing your thing and showing work and meeting people and just getting involved and uh, occupying your own space versus just like studying the space separately. Good answer. (laughs) Much better than mine, I'm sure. Do you remember yours? I don't. I wish I did, but it probably wasn't that good. So, (laughs) Okay, so I'm going to start with you on this one. Okay. Uh, Tell me about your background, Mm -hmm. where you went to college. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I went to New York University. Well, first I went to Spruce Creek High School um, with Annie. Uh, and then I went to New York University. It was my dream school, so very excited. She but then I also had a really great scholarship. Yeah. That I still like to brag about for her. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Annie's my number one fan. So what was it? What and was I'm the scholarship? And I'm her number one fan. I, um, it was just a, tu- well, it's not just, I had my tuition paid for, so... It was it was pretty solid. It was pretty solid, and then I was an RA. So, but Natasha was able to get that because she's always had a scholarship. Oh, thank you. Also, I was lower socioeconomic status, but it doesn't matter how we got there. We got there. Um, 
But yeah, it's uh, also when I was there too, I studied environment. So I went there to get my BFA in photography and imaging. I really wanted to go there since I was young because I actually really wanted to be a film director at first. And then I took a production class in high school and I did not have the patience to follow it through nor work with a bunch of people. I was just like, I just want to go and do my thing. I cannot communicate to you what to do. And so I went to photography thinking I was going to switch into TV, film and TV. And that didn't happen. I did try and switch, but I'm actually really glad it didn't happen because I think I'm much happier being an individual artist to myself versus um, getting involved in film and things like that. And I also studied environmental studies when I was there, but that was just a minor though. Um, What about you, Annie? I, I know, but please... Tell everyone else. <laughs> yep, background and where did you go to school? Yeah, I studied at the University of Central Florida. So um, I got a bachelor's of science in photography, which is kind of funny because most people think if you study art, you're going to have a bachelor's of arts. But I have a bachelor's of science. Sounds but, really nice. But I think that's funny because photography is very science based. So um, yeah. it's a lot of science so like my chemicals that i'm playing with but it's also like computer programs and like whatever um, uh, i want to know why you guys it sounded like you kind of already had started in photography going to school and, and gotten your fingers into that did you start with photography uh when did when did you start with photography i should say so i think when i first started playing with cameras i was about middle school age and i got like a sony video camera and my friends and I, we'd go and we'd film little videos, and I thought that was so fun, we'd make music videos or whatever. So I think I was also really interested in video at first. Um, and I, I played around with that through middle school. I was in like my yearbook club or whatever, and then high school, I, my high school had a dark room. So that was my freshman year of high school was my first introduction to working in a dark room, playing with chemicals. And by my senior year of high school, I was kind of really geeking out with it, and I would go into the dark room and like use paint brushes to paint my chemicals onto my prints and all sorts of like weird stuff and I was getting really experimental. Um, so we've talked about this a couple times before. I think it's super cool that you still use some of the old school techniques uh, using the dark room. Everybody for the most part is transitioned over to the digital and uses the computers but you're still loving the dark room, the, the exposure and all that stuff. Yeah, it's been, um, I, I kind of stepped away from it when I got into college because I, I started studying photography, so I started studying all of the different branches of photography. So, like, I started learning studio portraiture. I started learning, like, fine art photography. I started learning commercial photography. I didn't like commercial photography. Um, you know, and I started thinking, like, well, maybe I want to think more like a wedding photographer, and then I was like, I don't want to think like that, you know? So... There were all sorts of kind of like different avenues, but um, I think for me as an artist, I like to be hands-on. Mm. So when I graduated college and I didn't have access to a print lab anymore, you know, I, I could go to a store and go talk to somebody and have them print it. But for some reason, me not sitting next to the machine and working with it, and it felt like adding somebody into that process wasn't something that I, I wanted to do mm. as an artist. I, I didn't want that middle man to be there. I wanted to be the person who does it from like start to finish. Mm -hmm. So um, when Amber presented, you know, hey, do you want to show your photographs? I was like, I don't, I don't want to just print them. You know, I want to do something cool. So um, this project has been really fun because I haven't really had access to a dark room. Well, not that you need a dark room for cyanotypes, but you're still playing with chemicals and light sensitive materials. Um, but, Similar idea. Right? Yeah, it's still like that traditional kind, a traditional process um, of photography. But I think like that's been the fun, like getting to step back into it with this exhibition. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, real quick, cameras. Do you guys have particular cameras you guys like to use? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I use the Sony now. I do not like it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like it. It gets good pictures. Like it's good. Like it gives me good to work with. Um. It's just given me a lot of problems too. But a few months <laughs> after having it, I like tripped and fell on it. Oh, <laughs> and so maybe that's why. And I sent it back to them because I had insurance, but it was exactly the same as before. 
Um, and then I use Canon again. So I, I do like Canon a lot, but the mirrorless, especially for digital, is kind of the way to go now because industry standard, like megapixels, whatever. I'm not really a big camera tech. Um, I mean, that's because... not necessarily at all the the priority of a, a photographer. But... Yeah, I mean, like for some people, it definitely is for sure. Like it's your tool at the end of the day. So like it is really important. Um, but yeah, I kind of miss my Canon T3i, honestly. And I use like a little um, like old Canon cool pics now because it's so much smaller and lighter instead of like lugging around a big thing. And it's, it's cute. You have a couple cameras. I do. Yep. I do. Um, I I think my favorite camera that I use is the camera that my mom photographed my childhood on. That's cool. Um, I That's still cool. run around with it today. It's an Olympus point and shoot film camera, and um, most of the like ninety percent of the photos that I care about in the past two years have been taken on that photo. You know, mm -hmm. or taken on that camera. That's super cool. Yeah, but I mean, I like. When I was in school, I used my Canon. I had a 5D, very reliable, very bulky, very heavy. But like that's what I would do my concert photography on, or that's what I'd take to shows or on the road or whatever. Um, but when it started getting heavier and I wanted something to travel with, I started using Fuji. And I really like my little Fuji. I have next to my Okay, guys, I'm going to whip out my handy dandy note here. You came prepared? I came prepared. Okay. <laughs> All right. What do you guys want other emerging artists to know? Um, I think what I want other emerging artists to know is just to keep doing stuff. Like, it's very easy to become a consumer in your practice. Like, just looking on Instagram for inspiration, which is great. But like, for me, I had to disconnect because then I was just like consuming and not creating a lot as much so like creating and then also like just getting out there like meeting people even if you're like it's like yes networking is important but you can't just like go into things thinking that because it's just not gonna work out well for you like you have to practice at these things like you're not gonna be like out the jump like meeting all these people that are gonna give you your big breaks or whatever like you just have to like practice talking People practice showing your work, practice talking about your work, practice your practice, basically. Write down that, kids, because that's <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? What's, My what's some stuff? Yeah. I'd say keep going. There you go. Just keep going. Um, like, once you get started, there's no stopping. You know, like, you, if you're really passionate about art, you're going to keep doing it. And you, you determine how far you go, and that's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, you know. Um, but I also, I, I think that I would also say to make sure that you're making time for personal work because I, mm. I think I see artists that come into the gallery sometimes and um, they're, they're so fixated on a body of work or something that they think sells or that people will like. Mm. And um, maybe it's because I'm not at that stage in my art, art career where I'm producing for other people, but I think I also ever want to reach that point in my art career. I think that there's something really intrinsic about creating work that is important to you and then people will find the meaning in it as well. That's really good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I would also like to add practice making bad artwork. Like Ooh. seriously. Like bad art it, is good art. Yeah, because it's better than no art. Like it's it's at least it exists. And again, you have to practice. And especially like I think a lot of us are perfectionists, so we're just like, it's not gonna be perfect. I'm gonna not do it. Artist perfectionist? No. <laughs> I don't know. I guess like some of us You're I think I'm lot. talking yeah. to like my, I guess like the my soul, like my, the people that relate to my soul, not my soul. That was a lot. Um, yeah. Okay. No. I, Next question. No, that's that's on. good <laughs> as well. That's really good. Um, last question. What do you want people to get from your work? So we'll start with you. I want people to feel nostalgic or dreamy. Mm. Um, I want them to be taken to a place in time that might not exist but does exist in a different timeline. In your heart. Yeah, in my mind, in my subconscious, and like in the ether and the whatever, like it's a, it's a little portal. Anytime you look at an image and it's light, it's a moment, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. I think with my work, um, especially the one up right now, I just hope people get something from it. Not necessarily, I don't have something specific, like I mean, ideally, 
yeah, it opens your perspective up to seeing like all the beautiful energy around us all the time. Mm. But um, I think also a lot of times people are kind of just like passing through quickly. And I mean, I get it. Like I also pass through too quickly, but just um, like, I hope it like stops them so they can like stop and think and that they get something from it that they carry with them. Even if it's just like one little idea and, you know, five years down the road it's still in their brain they don't even remember where it's from but it helps them see something differently then and it's it it just means something even if they don't even know where it's coming from that's good that's good i feel like art what are you guys doing aren't you supposed to be working how do we get back to work wow with that i'm gonna peace out i'm passing the torch okay you guys Mm -hmm. are now the new emerging artists Thank yeah. you for answering some of my questions. <laughs> Look forward to working with you guys. Thank yeah, we'll you. See you yeah, see you around. Bye. Brandon also is working this exhibition, huh? Yeah. Cool.